I absolutely adore the Suikoden series. I always have since I played the first one back in high school, but it's just like a crying shame that the series has pretty much been dead in the water since like the PS2 era. But Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes answers the question of like, what would happen if this series had continued and maybe even stayed back on the PS2 and never left that console? Because this is definitely old school styled. Hi there everybody, I'm David, and if you are new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe for some more top 10s, news, and reviews, and smash that like button to show your love. And now, let me tell you all about my first impressions of Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes. First things first, you do need to know that this is an unabashedly retro game. And whether that's good or bad is up to your personal tastes, but I personally am a retro guy, and I am loving all the throwbacks. It really is like playing a Suikoden 6 game if it was released like late in the PS2's life cycle or early in PS3. There's still random encounters, there's still save points, there's no fast forwarding or anything else like that, and you still have to go to town to equip runes for god's sakes. It's wonderful! But at the same time, there are some modern quality of life additions like auto saving and quest tracking, so it's not all retro. But anyway, we'll get into all that more as the review goes along. Right from the get-go, you can choose between English or Japanese voice acting, as well as normal and hard difficulties. And you can even customize your difficulty down to the nth degree. It's pretty neat. You end up playing as Noah, a plucky little boy from a mountain village, who goes off to the big city to join the Watch. And you pretty much begin by being introduced to the other main members of the Watch. Gar, your leader, Leon, an overly enthusiastic girl who just joined like two days before, and Mio, your stereotypical strong, silent anime girl type. And while the Watch typically does just like odd jobs around town, you're instead taking part in a special mission and representing the League of Nations as you join up with the Empire to search for the hidden Rune Barrows, which is rumored to hold a primal lens, which is also, you know, one of the 27 true runes from the Suikoden series. Together, the six of you dive deep into the dungeon, working together to solve its trials and tribulations and eventually uncover the primal rune. Then, the game unceremoniously flash forwards you to six months into the future, where the League of Nations has idiotically given up the primal rune to the obviously evil empire, led by the super evil Luca Blight! Er, wait, um, I mean Dukes Aldrich. Yeah, sure. Not Luca Blight, no, never. Over the past six months, though, you've proven yourself to Gar, and he decides to hand over temporary control of the watch to you. Then you're pretty much just set loose to go out into the world and explore. There's very little guidance, along with plenty of towns and dungeons there that are in need of exploring. I love that they just kind of like plop you into the world map and let you go off and do your own thing. Oh, and did I mention there's a glorious world map to explore? Anybody who's ever watched my channel for any length of time knows how much I love world maps. I audibly gasped whenever I saw this and then I like squealed with girlish glee. I just couldn't control myself. I mean, a brand new game in this day and age with a world map that's not some awful point and click hot garbage? Am I dreaming? This is great! Not only that, but there's also a mini-map! Not that stupid little tracker on the top of the screen that doesn't tell you jack! And there's a super large map detailing the entirety of the world, as well as showing off each dungeon, so it's impossible to get lost and turn around. So that's so freaking cool, I just loved it! And as I said before, there are random battles. I mean, it does make sense. In the Suikoden games, the battles were always random, so why should it be any different here? I will say though, the random battles don't really occur that often, which is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because, you know, who in the world wants 50 million random battles every time that you turn around? I sure don't. But at the same time, it can be pretty obnoxious when if you're given a quest by this stupid archer guy who wants you to fight five wild boars and the game not only decides to make those wild boars like a super rare encounter, but then the random encounters just never happen too. Oh my god, it took forever to get those stupid frickin' boars for this asshole to join my party. Anyway, battles take place in a turn-based fashion where you fight in groups of six, utilizing three members in the front and three members in the back row, and each character is classified as short, medium, or long-ranged. So you need to put your short-ranged fighters in the front row while keeping your long-ranged fighters in the back row, and your medium fighters can pretty much just go wherever you want them to. You can then choose to give direct orders to your characters or have them fight automatically. Thankfully, though, you can kind of like customize their auto-battling, similar to the Gambit system of Final Fantasy XII, just not as detailed. And there's a turn order gauge signifying whenever your characters will be attacking too, kind of like in Final Fantasy X, so it's so nice. 
Each party member has their own unique attacks and special skills which you can further customize through their rooms. You can equip them for physical based damage skills, or to learn magical spells, or even to enhance and buff your stats. After battle, you gain experience and gold, and again, this is a Suikoden in all but name, so it does use that great leveling system, where the lower your level is, the more experience points that you'll gain, so it's super easy to level up your lower leveled party members. I will say this though, the battles in the original Suikoden games were like lightning quick. Here though, not so much. Yeah, some characters will attack at the same time as others, but it just seems to be like on the slower side, because you have to see everybody's special attack every single freaking time that they attack, and you're always going to want to be wanting to use them because there's really no like drawback to using them. I just kind of wish that there was either like a fast forward option, or better yet, an option to skip the specialized attacks or just see them one time and never see them again, kind of like the summons in Final Fantasy IX. Another addition are hero combinations, where two characters can initiate attacks together, and to top it off, there's even a covering mechanic or if someone's injured, another party member will take the hit for them, ensuring that they don't die. Then there's gimmicks, which are additions to the boss battles, and they're all clearly pointed out, easy to use, and there's all sorts of different ones. A lot of them will be like defensive, where you can take cover from a strong attack, or some of them can be offensive, allowing you to do massive amounts of damage to the boss if you're able to get the gimmick off correctly. Everything that you know and love from the original series is still here like the rune shops, the commodity trading shops, even the blacksmiths to upgrade your weapons. And then there's further additions there too, like little side chats and conversations that your party has with one another as you're traveling around the world. And now though, I do want to talk about some negatives. While the game does do a good job of letting you know what to do next, it doesn't really keep track of like the sub-quests or the character locations, the things that would be really good to know for a game like this. It would just be so nice to have like a little notebook type menu that says something like, Hey, so-and-so is over in this town. Or, hey, you know, this guy over there. He wants some beans before he'll join your party. Just something like that. A little friendly reminder to let you know who you've met, what their names are, what town they're located in, and what they want in order to join your party. Also, this has to be said, because I am not one to harp on graphics. I mean, I was raised on the NES and the Game Boy, for God's sakes, so I really don't care that much about graphics. However, I do care about this. There's this background blur, for lack of a better term, and it really bothers my eyes, like to the point where they tear up. And maybe it is just a me problem, but I even tried special computer glasses and it didn't help. And it was especially bad in this one scene with Sailor Moon, and like, I just had to look away from the screen and just press the buttons till it stopped doing this like, blur, going back and forth sort of thing. It was terrible. Also, the opening cutscene is just... bad. There's these two birds flying and like attacking each other, and it just does not showcase the game to best advantage. They should either just rework it entirely or just, you know, cut it out, because it is downright embarrassing. And if that's the first thing that you see from the game, it doesn't really set the right tone. Anyway though, that's it for my review and first impressions of Ayuden Chronicle 100 Heroes. Overall, I really enjoyed it. So I want to ask, are you going to be getting the game? Did you back it and have early access like me? Let me know what your feelings are, and let's get a discussion going on here. Let's all talk and chat about it, because I'm always in the comments too. And if you like what I do here over on the channel, please head on over to the Patreon to sign up for early access to my videos and behind the scenes photographs. The link to it is over in the video description. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.